Hej guys. Islam, over here. Uh, obviously, we thought you would be fighting someone besides Alex Volkanovski this fight week. So I'm curious, uh, when you got the news, when you got the news that you're rematching Alex Volkanovski rather than rematching Charles Oliveira, um, did you have to change much in your fight camp, or were you just focusing on what you were doing instead? Uh, honestly, I don't have some time to change something, and I just keep training. And for me, it's everybody know my style, you know. And uh, one thing I have to be in good shape, and that's it. Alex was in here right before you, and he said if the the roles were reversed, that you wouldn't take the fight on 11 days' notice if they came to you to rematch. Uh, yes, if you see told him, hey, bring your belt and come to Abu Dhabi before 11 days, he never take. Because he don't have any risks, without his belt he come. That's why he just come to make money. All about this, everybody knows this. He said that he feels the pressure is on you because he's the one coming off the couch. He was the one that's taking this fight on 11 days. He wasn't in camp. So I'm curious, do you feel any pressure to outperform your last performance against him? Uh, I don't have any pressures because I am a champion. Doesn't matter who is going to be in front of me. But I agree, this guy don't have any pressures. He came 11 days and I already beat him. And if I beat him again, just people going to tell, say, he come short, no, it is not good shape, something like this. But for me, it's Nothing means I just step to the cage, finish this guy, that's it. Dana White said that he's going to put your quote on the wall at the UFC Apex. I'm curious what you think about that, that your words are going to be there forever. You know, this is what UFC champion have to do, like a real champion. If you're a real champion, you have to take this, take fight, doesn't matter how many days, who is going to be not like your pound for pound champion when they give him Chelsea on him. If you're real champion, you have to fight. They put him number one, the number one guy right now, who is beat, who he beat last five fight. We don't have some name from top pound for pound rankings. And I just want to say about the rankings, about all these things. This is bullshit. I am I am not full of anymore. Islam, uh, why why did you change your mindset on the rankings? Why do you not care about that as much anymore? Because last time I beat already. This the last fight, number two versus number one. If you beat number two, number one, you have to be number one. But I don't know who make the rankings. Alex has said that his goal is to come out very aggressive. He's predicting he'll knock you out early in the fight. Uh, do you feel like that's how he has to fight, given the short notice, or maybe his best chance? I don't remember when Alex knocked you out someone. He want to try to pressure me, or he want to he wanna make me think about this, but I don't care. Everybody who stepped to the cage want to knock him out, but I stop them all. Uh, I spoke to one of your coaches, Javier Mendez, last night, and he was saying that in the last fight, uh, Alex was actually heavier than you in the cage. Uh, I asked Alex that. He said that's not true and that you were. Do you know what the deal is? Who was heavier? Uh, yeah, the UFC told me. Uh, because, because you guys know that when the beginning, they went five in the morning, I don't have time to make my weight back, you know. But he don't have to cut much weight for the 155. And, uh, you know, the schedule in Australia, how the beginning the event, it's crazy. Yeah, how much different is this for you, especially with, like, the weight cut, the rehydration? Is it going to be a lot better this time? Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be, like, usually with all UFC fighters have the schedule, you know. But in Australia, uh, I wake up put alarm 8 a.m., wake up, and I think I have to eat or 
Now I have to go to arena and you no, know, this is first time on my life. And we change many things and I don't bring my weight back. Do you feel like Charles Oliveira pulling out of this fight, did he lose his opportunity? Like, do you think he needs to win another fight and now Justin Gaethje will be next? You know, uh, honestly, I feel, okay, I'm gonna beat Al uh, Volkanovski now, and I have two opponents, Gaethje and Oliveira. I think they have to fight again, and who is win, I just beat this guy again. What about Gamrot? Because he is the backup fighter. Gamrot, Gamrot is good, but he lose couple fights ago. But I don't know. They all beat each other. You know, doesn't matter. You see, just call me and I will be ready. And uh, where does welterweight fit into your plans? I know you're going to be keeping a close eye on the fight between Leon Edwards and Colby Covington. Yeah, of course. If they call me, I will be ready for Colby or Leon. Any fights, but my dream, my goal, I want to second belt. Why is that so important to you? Because uh, we have many UFC champions, but not much double champ. I want to be double champion. Um, and last thing for me, it sounds like the UFC's deal with USADA is going to end at the end of this year and there's going to be a new drug testing program. What would you like to see different in terms of how uh, the athletes are taken care of as far as the, the drug testing program for the UFC? I think this news make... Uh, this, when I wake up and saw the news, the news make me upset because this is... Uh, UFC, this is a level, you know. And uh, so I don't know about the new organization, but some organization have to control this because we know when... Usada come and before the Usada, how the fighters change, how the fighter looks, and how they fight, everything is changed, you know. That's why high level sport, it's have to be under some anti doping program. Just going off that, you know, obviously last time you thought there was this IV conversation going on. Did that change your level of respect for Alex and his team? Because today it seems like you're a little bit annoyed about him stepping in, some of the things he's saying. Yeah, that from his team, I, we have, I know some couple bullshit guy who want to make some drama, you know. But if you professional fighters, you if you say something, you have to... You have to back her up this, you know. You cannot say something. He, he put IV or something like this and you don't have... Uh, you, don't, you don't have proof, you know. With Alex taking this fight, you said he was doing this for the money. He says he's doing it to try and achieve something great that no one else can do. Do you not think there's any truth in what he says when he says that? My opinion, he take this fight because of money. And uh, what he lose? If I beat him again, what he lose? He have his belt, and he will defend his belt beginning of next year. He says if he loses to you, then he'll never get a chance at that belt, and that's what he's risking. He know he didn't touch this belt never. Uh, uh. Islam, over here. Salam. Uh, Alex talks about the, you know, he took this opportunity. Part of it was because he wasn't sure if he was going to get it because things could change. You could move up to Walter Wade. How about you? Was this important? Were you okay if you never got to fight Alex again? Or did you also really want this rematch? Uh, honestly, after the first fight, many people talking about the fight and many people want to watch this rematch. And I'm uh, really happy because right now they can give me anyone, but I'm really happy because they give me Charles, because they give me uh, Volkanovski, because last time I fought in his arena, his area, but now it's Abu Dhabi and 
everything now on my side. Uh, do you fear that if you beat him again, people are going to kind of make excuses for him to say, oh, well, he came on short notice and whatnot? Of course. That's why I put it in Instagram. Before he make this drama, I put the news. Don't make. And uh, Alex was, you know, predicting a knockout, saying he's going to, you know, he can't show you too much respect. Do you almost feel like that could be his downfall, like if he comes out too aggressive? I show him too much respect in the first fight. This fight, I will try to finish him all fights, looking for the finish all five rounds. And your run so far, obviously, you're always willing to fight everybody, but circumstances sometimes don't play out that way. But you're fighting a lot of big names, either champions, long winning streaks. Does part of you like that, that on your legacy, on your resume, you get to put these big names? Uh, yeah, you know, for the legacy, I think like now it's rematch, second fight with Oliveira, it's not so good for the legacy. I need some new names, second belt, and uh, you know, all like very much it's, but I uh, really happy because they give me now uh, Volkanovski because last year, same time, same month, I'm training here for the Oliveira, you know, and uh, I feel same, but when they change, it's give me some new energy. And one more for me. Do you have a prediction for Leon and Colby? Who do you think wins? Uh, I don't know who, is, who will win, but I hope Colby wins. Thank you. Salam, salam alaikum. Такой вопрос сейчас вот с коллегами разговаривали с Александром Волконовским, и ему задали вопрос, если бы он ему сообщили о том, о вашем поединке немного позже, на несколько дней, принял бы он этот поединок. Как ты думаешь? Если бы ему, например, вот на днях сообщили бы о том, что нужно с тобой драться, принял бы он этот вызов, и насколько сильно та сумма, которую он запросил 10 дней назад, и сейчас она разнилась бы? Ну, я думаю, он принял бы. Я его считаю настоящим чемпионом, крепким орешком, который будет драться вне зависимости, как пойдет бой, или как бы тяжело ему не было, он будет драться. И... Насчет суммы, я думаю, да, сумма точно поменялась бы. The question was, uh, we were talking with my colleagues and asking about uh, if Volkanovski heard about the rematch even a few days further, not, not the 11 day notice, but a few days afterwards. Would he still say yes? Would he still want to fight you? And is the money that he was offered the reason why the decision was made so quick? And will he still accept the fight if, if that's the money that's talking? And the answer was that uh, I believe that he was going to accept the fight no matter what because He's a real champion. He's a he's a die-hard fighter. So it's very important for him to to fight for his legacy, for his name. Еще один вопрос. Как ты думаешь, Волконовский на десятидневном уведомлении опаснее, чем Чарльз Оливейра с полным лагерем? Another question. What do you think is Volkanovski with a 10-day notice more dangerous than Charles Oliveira with his full training camp? Знаешь, я думаю, все оппоненты опасны. Если ты им дашь поработать, любой из топов опасный. You know, I think all opponents are dangerous. Uh, I mean, anybody from top, from top, top of the division, they're all dangerous. So, if you let them work, if you let them implement their game plan, they're all dangerous. А в прошлом бою ты дал Волконовский поработать? Как ты думаешь? Last fight, do you think you gave him the opportunity to work a little bit? Да, думаю, прошлый бой не... Не особо по плану у меня пошел, но мы внесли немного корректив. Думаю, этот бой будет совсем другой. Yes, I believe so. I think last fight uh, didn't really go exactly as we planned, but we did a lot of adjustment. We did some improvements, so I think this time is going to go much better. Ислам, приветствую. Если представить, что Алекс был бы твоим тиммейтом, а не твоим соперником, вот ты бы со стороны бы смотрел, ты бы отговаривал его выходить против себя на коротком уведомлении? Let's pretend that there is a scenario where, as opposed to being your opponent, Alex is actually your teammate. Would you actually try to talk him out out of fighting you? No, у меня в команде никто не гонится за деньгами, а у них по-другому. Ему предложили хорошую сумму здесь. Я думаю, 90 процентов в расстреле они просто хотят заработать, и он не упустил свой шанс. You know, in my team, nobody is after the money. And I think here what's happening is in his team it's totally different. So there's 90% chance that the only reason he's saying yes is because he got a good opportunity to make a good paycheck and so that's what he's after.
Сейчас с Комару Усманом прилетел Джастин Гейджи. Пересекались ли вы уже в Абу-Даби? И интересно в будущем противостояние с ним. Along with Kamara Usman, we got Justin Gagey here. They came together. Uh, have you seen him in the hotel or have you seen him around? And are you thinking that there might be a fight between you and Gagey coming up? No, I haven't seen him yet. But I know what I was thinking. I was talking to him in English. I already think that after this fight, there are two opponents who are ready for their title chance. And for that, I think that he will probably fight them and fight them and fight them чтобы был uh, настоящий один претендент. No, I haven't seen him yet, but uh, to tell you the truth, I already said that in English before in an interview is that I'm pretty sure that after this fight there's already two definite opponents that I already have ready for, for a fight for, with me, so I think the two of them should fight between each other so we have an actual number one contender for the belt. И последний от меня вопрос. У тебя есть ощущение, что вот после этих замен uh, Болельщикам стал интереснее бой Чумаев против Усмана, чем твой против Волконовский. My final question is, after all of these substitution last minute changes, do you think that the fans are more excited about the fight between Usman and Chimaev as opposed to the fight between you and Volkanovsky? Ну, Чимаев и Усман тоже очень интересный бой, но даже мне все мои знакомые пишут, говорят, соперник поменялся, мы уже были на твоем бою с Оливейрой, и уже не было такого интереса там приезжать туда же в Абу Даби и все сейчас ищут билеты очень интересно им посмотреть именно этот рематч и я думаю вокруг этого боя с Волконовским сейчас для моих фанатов я думаю больше интереса. You know, honestly, I'm sure that the fight between Usman and Chimaev is very interesting. But from the people that I know, from my fans, a lot of the people uh, wrote to me and they said, you know, we've actually seen a fight between you and Oliveira before, and we weren't very, very interested in that. But now that the, the opponent changed, and now that you fight in Volkanovski, we're scrambling, trying to find tickets, trying to get to Abu Dhabi just to make sure and see this rematch because it's very interesting to a lot of the fans around the world. So I think that this, this fight is very important as well. Islam. Если можно, Вадим Тихомиров, матч.тв.ру. А вот бойцам приходится давать пресс-конференцию примерно за один-два дня до взвешивания. Значит ли это, что мы с вами общаемся, когда вы в максимально плохом настроении? То есть можешь ли ты сказать, что сейчас у тебя, а там, возможно, самое плохое настроение за последние полгода? You know, a lot of the athletes are forced to give the interviews on media days only about one or two days before they have to, to make weight. And is it possible to assume that this is probably the worst days for you and you're in the worst mood out of the entire time just because you're thinking about cutting weight? Нет, я только потренировался. Знаешь, это от чего зависит? Утром проснулся и сколько у тебя веса показал. Если все по плану, все идет хорошо, у тебя хорошее настроение на целый день. You know, I actually just came from training, so uh, really what it depends on is uh, when you wake up in the morning, you get on the scale, what does the scale say? And if, if the scale says what you want it to say, then you have good mood the entire day, but that's, that's what it's dependent. Uh, и ты несколько раз говорил о том, что для Алекса Волконовски важен гонорар в этом поединке. А просто интересно, у тебя есть какая-то инсайдерская информация или ты, подписывая контракт, представляешь цифры, за какие он дерется? То есть вот откуда ты берешь сведения о его гонораре? You know, a couple of times you said about the fact that Volkanovski is only fighting for the money. Is that something that you have, like an inside information when you sign the contract, do you know how much he's getting? Or where are you getting this, this uh, idea that he's only fighting for the money? No. У нашей менеджерской команды много бойцов, и я как-то до этого спрашивал, ну, например, если человек выходит на таком коротком уведомлении. Ну, я... Ни для, для кого не секрет же это, что он в первую очередь называет сумму, если договаривается, то он принимает бой. You know, in our management company, there's, there's a lot of fighters, and uh, I've asked before, I just was curious to see what happens if somebody comes out last minute, if there's a different difference in numbers there. And so, you know, honestly, it's not a secret for anybody that first thing you do is you, you call your price, and then if, if the price is good, then you say yes or no. Последний вопрос от меня. Мы видим на фотографиях много родственников и членов семьи Хабиба Нурмагомедова. Приехал ли кто-то из твоих родных на этот бой? Находится ли он здесь, в Абу-Даби? Last question. Мои братья приехали. Ну, отец там, дяди мои не приезжают, потому что я сам прошу тоже, чтобы не приезжали. По-любому, когда старшие приезжают, чуть надо уделять внимание, но сейчас очень тяжело этим заниматься из-за этого. Я сам прошу, чтобы из старших не приезжали никто. The question was, uh, we, we saw a lot of pictures of, the, of Habib's family and his relatives that are here for the fight. 
did you have anybody from your own family that came to see you? And the answer is, uh, I had a couple of brothers that came, but uh, not, not my uncles, not my dad, because uh, this, is, this is very difficult when you have such an important fight. You still have to pay attention to those relatives that come in here. And it's actually something that I ask them myself not to come for the fight, just because I have some other things that I have to concentrate on. Islam, uh, uh, в недавнем интервью ты сказал, что Хабиб не только не будет присутствовать у тебя в, там, в раздевалках перед, перед боем, его даже не будет на арене. Вот объясни тем, кто не понимает, потому что некоторые еще думают, что вдруг Хабиб когда-то будет выступать. А почему он не ходит даже на турниры? You know, a little bit ago in the interview you said that not only is Хабиб not going to be in your corner, he's actually not even going to be at the arena. Uh, can you please explain to some people that still don't understand why is it important that Хабиб is not going to be here? Но, но я только вот так могу это объяснить. У нас очень большая команда. И если Хабиб будет проходить на чей-то бой, то мы все одинаковые в команде. У нас нету кто-то чемпион, кто-то там только начинает. Все друг друга поддерживаем. Если он на мой бой пришел, значит ему надо идти там и других поддерживать, и на все бои ходить, чтобы кого-то, может, не обидеть. И из-за этого... Просто он уже сказал, что не будет посещать арену, не будет там в углу, и мы его все в этом поддерживаем. You know, we have a pretty big team, and uh, it, we don't define who's a champion, who's just starting out, who's in the middle of their career. Everybody's equal, everybody's the same. So if he's going to come to my fight, he's going to have to come to other fights and stuff like that, and or he's going to have to explain why is it he went to one fight and didn't go to the other fight. So uh, that's what he said. He's not he, he's not going to be in a corner. He's not going to be coming in. He's not going to be there for the fights just because this way he doesn't have to do it for everybody else. И в еще одном недавнем интервью uh, тебе задали вопрос относительно того, если бы Хабиб сейчас выступил, uh, мог бы он победить uh, Стрикланда, ты сказал, что это вообще без проблем. И ты даже это, сделал отдельный пост про это, где сказал, что Хабиб в очень хорошей форме, и ты там именно процитировал, что он мог бы победить даже Стрикланда сейчас. А почему ты именно подчеркнул, что ну, это о конкретном бойце шла речь? Ты, ну, то есть мог бы просто же сказать, например, что он бы сейчас победил там любого. Ну, я сейчас смотрю примерно, сколько он весит, и ну, вес Стрикланда, и Стрикланд на данный момент чемпион, и из-за этого я думаю... Как он сейчас борется с действующими бойцами этого, этой весовой категории, я вот ну, представляю бой и не вижу шансов у Стрикланда, что он сможет остановить Хаиба борьбу. Question was, uh, we saw an interview that you said that Habib is in such a good shape right now that he can even come back and he can, he can win a bunch of guys, including Sean Strickland, who's the champion now. Why is it specifically that you're speaking about somebody like Strickland when you, come to, when you talk about Habib coming back and fighting? And the answer is, uh, I, I see the way he is, I see the kind of shape that he is, I see how much he weighs, and that's, that's the way, I see the way he works and wrestles with the guys that are the same weight as Strickland as a champion, so I know that for him it wouldn't be a problem, it's not even a question for him to come in and beat somebody like Strickland. Спасибо. Ислам, Все говорят о том, что какой молодец Алекс, потому что он так на коротком давлении выходит. Не кажется ли тебе, что не зас... ты тоже заслуживаешь похвалы за то, что ты согласен с ним драться на таком коротком уведомлении? I know they not tell about this. He gave me big respect because I took the I took the fight when they changed, you know. But this is the way how UFC champion have to do. And uh, I don't need any respect because this fight like soon or later have to be, you know, and this very much what I really want. Assalamu alaikum, Islam. Uh, Islam, not just in the UAE, but also in Qatar, Bahrain, Oman, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Jordan, Palestine, you have so many fans in the Middle East now that Five years ago, even now, maybe they don't even watch MMA or they don't know the UFC, but they know Islam Makhachev, they know Habib, they know Usman, they know Omar. Uh, what does this do for you? How do you feel knowing that there is an entire 350 million people that will always come to watch and support you and your team? 
feel feel awesome because I know all uh, all the people from all Islamic country or not just Islamic country they support me a lot and uh, uh, that's why I really like to fight in Abu Dhabi because they all can come easy to Abu Dhabi and watch my fight live here and I just want to say thank you and I have to show you know good example for all the people thank you good luck champ